What's going on guys? Your ass guest here. Today we're going to be learning how to take on the Scent to Men solo in Guild Wars 2. Let's go and get on into it. We're just using a Necromancer class. Let's get inside in this area. Basically it's going to be inside of Lion's Arch and it's one of the mysterious doors inside of the main areas here. Once we load in, I will show you guys the build we have. All you have to do is have Chilling Scythe, Brave Digger, Death Spiral, Nightfall, Grasping, Darkness, Scene of Vampirism, Well of Darkness, Scene of Undeath, Spectral Grasp, and Plague Lands. For the main attributes, we got Spike, Reaper Might, Spiteful Talisman, Death Embrace, Scene of Suffering, Siphon Power, Close to Death. Next one, Soul Reaping, Gluttony, Unyielding Blast, Soul Barbs, Soul Battery, Death Perception, Reaper, Shrouded Knight, Chilling Nova, Shivers of Death. So basically we don't have the rest of the stuff. So I mean, it's not like you need a fully maxed out one and you might die a couple times, but the Necromancer is actually the easiest way to recover yourself, especially inside of this mode. So this first area, you see this little chain here. Basically, if you just come down the chain and there's this white building here, if you run over to the right side corner area, Instead of having to do like all of his random commands and everything, you can stand over here. The minions completely disregard you. Basically, he's going to be having you do like random salutes and things like that while enemies are trying to kill you and it's super hard to do both at the same time. So if you just chill over here in the corner, it's actually not too bad. So as soon as you hear this dialogue, that means he's going to actually come down here and now you can fight. Alright, so we are going to take on some of the aggro. So basically there's going to be scarecrows around the area which are going to be designed to try to like frighten you and push you around the areas. As a necromancer, you're actually able to utilize a lot of the ads to actually help you out more than you would think. So basically you have this attribute that's able to heal yourself every single time that you pick yourself up. And the scarecrows don't have a way to block any of the attacks. So unlike the plastic spiders and everything else that can actually dodge a couple attacks here, you can actually get rid of everything on. So we're just going to come over here and just try to slaughter a few of these guys and try to keep all everything all nice and clear. We use scarecrows primarily to heal ourselves. If a little skeleton or a couple of candy corn dudes survive, that's fine. Now we're just going to focus on the Mad King Thorn himself. So there's going to be three different phases. This first phase isn't too bad, honestly. Keep an eye on your health. As a necromancer, basically you're able to leech off a ton of health here. And I'm sure if we had the rest of our heroic points, we were able to make our character a little bit stronger. But it's, I mean, honestly, it's not too bad doing this solo. We can do it relatively quickly. Let's see, so we're just going to do this. Don't you run away from me, you little coward. Yeah, but I definitely say the Necromancer is the easiest class to solo this. With the ability to have like the lifesteal ability while you're on the ground, it's just so much easier to pick yourself up while doing this. I mean, considering the fact that he's a really big boss, he's honestly not too hard to fight. Now you can always sit here and swap to your other weapons and get a whole bunch of like status effects and everything on too. Swap back to your swords. Because a lot of our abilities have quite a bit of life drain ability, and as soon as you swap to the Reaper class, basically you're able to steal a ton of health from him as well. For the most part, we're just going to be showing chopping his legs, so we're going to speed through this part. Now remember how I said we're keeping that Scarecrow alive? You'll see why here in a little bit. And as long as you stick outside of the red circles, they honestly don't do anything bad to us. So it's not too bad to keep them inside here. Since there's three different parts, you basically have to get him a third of the way down in order for him to move into the next area. Some of these areas are going to be a little bit harder to get into, just so you guys are aware. Oh. 
So basically, as soon as you get through a part, he's going to run away down to the next area. So you want to come over here to the right side. Make sure he does move on to the next side, but you should be good to go. And there'll be like these little rocks around here. So come down the little chain here and jump across. You are going to lose a little bit of health, so I suggest full healing before you do this next jump here. And you just sort of flail yourself down here like a say, oh, You are going to be taking quite a bit of damage here, but as long as you just keep on coming down the chain, you should be fine. And then you want to run over here to the right side. There's going to be a lot of these little like glow spiders and stuff, but honestly, they're not too bad to just avoid. So you just walk over to this next area, and then you're able to heal. And then phase two starts and basically it's going to be the exact same fighting mechanism. So nothing actually changes in this fight. It's just that you have to actually chase him three different areas. So you can use the spiders and stuff to heal yourself, but it's kind of tricky since sometimes I can sit here and dodge. So if you are relying on those guys, definitely want to try to use something else. Seriously, let's do this. Boom. Now there are going to be a couple cracks on this second stage here. See how there's a split right next to us. Basically, if you fall down there, it is going to be a very far death. So <laughs> try to keep him over on like the left side and try not to like push him too far in the back. Basically, we're going to want to keep him relatively where he is right now. So as long as he stands right here, so this is where we swap over to our staff, for example. But if we keep him around over here, theoretically, he shouldn't spawn too far away from a whole bunch of stuff and it, the scarecrows are going to push you back too so he's basically in a spot where we don't want to stand and we're just going to have to do a few abilities with the staffs and he's eventually going to run towards us and get annoyed just like that and now that we're down now you guys can see why we want the scarecrows next to us so this life trade ability basically we're just going to sit here and melt the scarecrows boom picked yourself up and now we're good to go for the fight which is why I said the Necromancer is the easiest to actually take on this area. We don't even even have like a fully decked out Necromancer or anything. It's honestly not too crazy of a build that we need. One more thing before I forget to mention, if you do fall off the map or if you do die, you are able to spawn back at the teleporter and actually just continue on the fight. It's not like his health resets. So that's another thing that's super good for if you just want to sit here and practice taking on a boss by yourself or test out your character's build to see if you're actually able to do it. It's honestly not too bad to survive in this area. And occasionally the scarecrows will push you off over there. So here's a good way to show that you have to respawn. So basically you just come upstairs here, run down the chains, and you'll be right in front of you. I mean, he's almost about to move anyway, so we're doing pretty good. Once his health gets kind of low, he's going to teleport over into the next area. This one's going to be the hardest part. Basically, you need to figure out a way to hop down without actually killing yourself. So from up top, it's not too bad. So if you just like come down around over here, land on this little ledge, you're going to attempt to jump over to that one. So let's see. So let's walk across over to this way just a little bit. That way it's a little bit less of a fall. Hop down. 
Now the easiest way I found to do this is to actually aim for this little building here. So we're going to like belly flop onto this and just slide down to the right. There you go. So that's how you do it. Obviously it's not like the easiest and cleanest method, but that is the way that I found it's a little bit faster to get down. You could try to like jump across on the rocks there, but if you're not the best at doing this sort of things, you want to try to land over here, it is possible. Obviously it's going to be a little bit more crazy, so it's definitely going to make you lose a little bit of health, but I mean, honestly, it's not too bad. Now this platform basically is such a small area to where it's actually going to be easier than phase two. I don't know if they originally intended it for it to be easier or if it just happens because all the scarecrows are right next to us. But basically, since we're able to have health like wherever we are inside the zone, it's so much easier to set yourself alive. Let's see here. Come on, buddy. Don't you scare me away from him. more hits and he's dead so basically this area is really good because you get to pick and choose what you want as a reward here so you accept that and sometimes you even get the tattered bat wings from this chest over here and i mean honestly it wasn't too bad even before like the speeding up part it was only half an hour that's honestly not too bad at all and that's from coming inside all the way from the very beginning and you know going through our build and everything but yeah if you guys enjoy make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one